had a big debate this Christmas with my girlfriend about creatine. So we're in Cape Town in South Africa and I went and bought creatine and I put it on the table and I was like, I'm going to start taking creatine, right? That's so me. Not really knowing what it is or what it's for. That's all right. <laughs> and she picked it up and then looked at the, the label and gave it back to me and she said, creatine's not for women. <gasps> and she, she felt, and I think a lot of people feel this, this is why I wanted to ask you it, is she thinks that she thought creatine was for bodybuilders. And I... Googled it and Googled it and showed her the Google thing. And she went, oh, amazing. And she started taking creatine. Yeah. But I imagine there's a lot of people out there that think creatine is for people that want to just get stacked. Great question. Um, sometimes you, know, you get deep in your own world and you forget, you know, what people are really thinking out of that, that world. So there's a website uh, and a company called examine.com. I have you know, no affiliation with them. But it is, it is an unbiased place that you can go to and you can ask that question for any supplement. You can ask about creatine or you can ask about arginine or you know, Tongat Ali or whatever you want. You can also ask it by the adaptation. So what are the best supplements for fat loss, for brain function, for cardiovascular health? And it'll give you answers based on there. So it's a really phenomenal site. So when you ask, does it work? Well, work for what and work how much? That's the two questions, right? Work for what? So in the case of creatine, it improves, say, muscle strength. Probably why she had that muscle size. Okay, what's the weight of the evidence? Lots of studies, hundreds and hundreds of studies, men, women, young, old, children, all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, astronauts, space flight, um, bed rest, tons and tons of research. Okay, check that box. Well, what's the magnitude of effect? You're probably looking at somewhere between a three to 12%. Okay, that's a pretty good magnitude of effect um, for something that has an insanely good risk profile, meaning like, you can't cause imbalances with it. It's not a hormone. Um, it's not a mineral, so it's not causing oxidative stress anywhere. It, it's like really, really robust in there. And so when you look at it, you go, okay, great. Pretty easy choice here. Um, I'm not, it, it's not like the hormone stuff, like I said, where you're like, you're turning on something. It, it's a fuel source. So in fact, remember earlier when I said metabolism, you're either using carbohydrates or fat as a fuel. Actually, creatine is the third one. It's a faster one. So the stoichiometry is one to one. So you can break down one molecule of phosphocreatine gives you one molecule of ATP. It's the fastest one, but it gives you the lowest energetic output. Mm -hmm. So it's a fuel. And because of this, there is extensive research on performance-based things. This is where it started. Uh, in fact, I remember as a kid when the entire Balco and steroid thing hit baseball mm -hmm. in the early 2000s, creatine was like on that list. And that's where this entire association came because Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds were using all of, of course, allegedly, whatever performance enhancing drugs they were or not using. And they were also using things like creatine. And so that just kind of got lumped in as like, oh, it's a steroid. It's a, like a, because it came from the, that world. And most of the evidence and most of the research was on that. Fortunately, the last 20 years, honestly, people have sort of left that with creatine because we know the answer there. More interesting stuff is coming in things like bone health. Now, my friend Darren Kando uh, just finished a really great study, two-year study on postmenopausal women at 20 grams a day. Typical dosage for creatine is five grams. So your typical bodybuilder at the gym is using five grams a day. He put this in postmenopausal women, 4x the dose, and did it for two years. No adverse effects. No kidney issues, no problems. Uh, improved some of the bone markers, uh, I think in the actual, like the femur area, I don't remember exactly, it didn't improve others. It's not a miracle, it's not a panacea, but it was like, hey, it didn't do anything bad. Potential to help bone mineral density in a, in an ish, in a population that really needs it from just a simple fuel. It's kind of, rather than thinking about it like a mineral or a vitamin or a hormone, think of it more of like protein powder. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's, just a, it's a nutrient that you get that, that fuels it. In addition, there's been at least two trials that I can think of off the top of my head that have shown that it may enhance things like mood. Uh, there's a ton of research on traumatic brain injury, long-term physical brain health. Um, because it is such a fast fuel source, it's actually a preferred fuel source in your brain. Uh, the, your astrocytes, which are kind of like the, the, the central nervous system cells, thrive on creatine. So they absolutely love it. So it, it is a... Um, neurological as well. So it'll help the neurological system, nervous system, um, as well as brain. And, and tons and tons of stuff going on. It is an antioxidant. Anti, uh, has some like mild antioxidant properties and a bunch of other stuff. So um, while I understand 
a lot of people still hear it and think of it as like the muscle thing. That's because that's where it came from and the dominant research. But really, I would encourage people to look at um, more of the last 20 years, what people that are doing creatine research, the topics they're actually studying, and it's not muscle growth in young, healthy guys. Does red light play a role? Because for Chris, yeah. Christmas, she got me two massive red light. Um, I don't even know what they are. They're just like panels. Yep. There's a lot of data on HR, uh, red light therapy. This is actually a good example of something that um, that I missed the boat on. Like I've changed my tune on this one big time. I, I didn't think that there was anything here. And I yeah, was wrong about that one. There, there's a lot of research. Um, what is red light therapy doing? I'm, I, I, in my head, I was like, maybe it's mimicking the sun or something. I don't know. Okay. So there's a couple of wavelengths. There's one around like 640-ish nanometers and another about 850 nanometers, plus or minus here. And what, what we're looking at here is red light therapy in those wavelengths have an ability to cross and get into tissue so they can get past your skin layer. And they activate a whole series of cascades um, of things that are, that are beneficial for skin health. Um, we've seen injury. Um, we've actually seen changes in endocrine system, hormone balances for them. Um, there's a, Again, it's pretty impressive what it's actually doing because it can get in and stimulate. Um, it absolutely can mimic. There's actually data on uh, it potentially improves vision uh, mm -hmm. when actually like in the eye. Um, work with your, your eye doctors on that one, please, your ophthalmologist and stuff. Uh, but you can actually see that. You'll see this a lot uh, for overall global recovery. Uh, again, for muscle soreness and muscle damage, um, it can actually benefit those as well. Um, I have them. There's, there's a bunch coming out, but they can actually get hyper-specific and like focus it on a certain area of your body that, that is damaged and tissue. Um, we've used them in a, lot, a lot with athletes coming back from surgery specifically. So one of our quarterbacks this year had a pretty um, gnarly lower body injury at the very beginning of the season. And we were able to get him back in pretty good shape pretty fast. And, and we used many different things, but red light was certainly one of them. I haven't found many people yet where I'm like, you definitely have to go get red light. It's one of those things where I'm like, oh, you got it? Oh, cool. Like, I would do it. Or like, hey, you have a $60 million contract this year on the line? Well, we're doing everything. Like, like bring it yeah, all on. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's kind of where I, I stand with it. So uh, it's, it's another area that I, I am paying attention to more and more to see what more things come out. But really, the ability for those, um, those wavelengths to penetrate skin to actually get into tissue is what's causing active change uh, inside your actual physiology. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.